cover the topic of nested tables. And so I've had a lot of questions from subscribers and clients about how to nest tables inside one another and the benefits of doing that. And so I want to start by showing you on the screen here how to drag and drop a table object from the higher, uh, from the object library. And we're going to do a table with uh, three columns and one body row. That's fine. And when we do that, we can take immediately and stretch it out and make it the width we want. And we can create a place for buttons to make the table repeatable. So I'm going to create a subform in this cell and then set it to positioned. So now we have position subform contained inside that cell. And I'm going to put my button inside there. I'm going to change the caption to something simple. And then I'm going to reduce the size of the button using the layout tab. Now I can copy and paste that button and I don't have to redo all those settings and create a minus button. So I have buttons on my form now. Also there's something that comes up every now and then. You see these dots along the the design page. You can narrow those dots to make it a little bit easier to snap to grid by going to drawing aids and setting the interval to maybe sixteenth of an inch. It's usually what I do and that makes the dots finer. And then now when I'm inside here I can I can move this a little bit better on the grid, a little bit more precise. I'm going to shrink the size of that column. Okay, so now for nested tables. We want to create a nested table so that we can have a table inside of a table, meaning we can have a table that repeats inside of a table that repeats. And this might be important for some type of multi-layered invoice or uh, multi-layered uh, calculations. And the way to do it basically is to do a cell that contains a subform and in the subform create a table um, itself. So basically we want to start off with having a table and then creating a subform cell, kind of like what we did with the button. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and merge these two cells. To merge these two cells, I need to highlight both of them, then right click, and then choose merge cells. And so now it takes the two columns and joins them into one. And I'm going to do the same thing for the header. And it combines the two words that were in there. And I'm going to erase one of them. All right, so now we have a cell here called cell 2. And it's set to be a text object right now. And we want to change that text object to a subform. And again, we want to make it, well, actually, this time, we don't want to make it a position subform. We want to make it a flowed subform. And remember what flowed means. Flowed means make the object the size it needs to be to show everything inside it and allow it to grow. Positioned means make it the size of whatever you set a design time using x, y coordinates and don't allow anything to move around. All right, that's the two differences in these things. So flowed, when we're doing repeatable rows in a table, we want it to grow, so we want it set to flowed so it will allow for that growth. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to drag and drop a table inside of this cell. So in order to do that, we need to take our table object and drag it into now our cell, cell 2, and drop it there. And we'll leave the same auto settings. And now we have this table inside of this table. Now the construct gets a little hokey uh, inside of this. It's a bug in lifecycle when you try to s expand the last column it assumes you're trying to expand the column of the the apparent object and that just doesn't work right so it's a little hokey in any way we won't mess with that right now but that's a bug in lifecycle okay so now we have inside of our table another table we're going to grow that as big as we need it we're going to create ourselves another set of buttons and by doing what we did before, choosing the cell, making it a subform, making it positioned, and this time we're going to make it easy. We're going to take the buttons we've already made 
add some code and then copy and paste them over. So let's add the code first. The add code is the same as it always is. A um, little bit of JavaScript here. We're going to use the click event. So I'm opening up the script editor and I'm going to the click event. My language is JavaScript. And I'm going to say this.parent.parent.instanceManager dot add instance. Add instance is just a function that adds one instance of the object to the repeatable table. Now in order to get that to work we have to do some adjustments to the row one but we're gonna we'll, we'll do the code first and then we'll go back. And in this one we want to declare a variable called row num. That's just something I, I made up. Row num equals this dot parent dot parent dot index. And what that means is get the value of the row we are in so that when we hit the delete button or the minus button it will delete the actual row we've uh, we are contained in. If we do instance manager dot remove index I'm sorry remove instance and we don't put the row num in it's going to always assume we mean the last row so that's why we have the row num variable we can stick that in this parenthesis so it only deletes the row we're on. Okay, and then one more thing to make the rows repeatable, we have to go to row one, which is this row right here in the first table, the parent table, and we have to set the binding to repeat. We'll make our initial count one and we'll make our max three, just just because we don't want to go too crazy here. All right, so let's preview and make sure those buttons work. All right, they work. And so when it repeats, it not only repeats the row, it repeats everything inside the row, which means it repeats this other table. That's a nested table. Oh, wait a minute, we didn't check the minus button. Let's make sure that works too. All right, and the way I like to test this is I like to uh, make sure that the right, the right row is actually being removed by making a text field here so I can actually type something. And I test that by going in here and saying, all right, I'm going to remove this middle row, so I'm going to put a test text in there. And if I click this minus button, the, the row that has that word test should be the one that is taken away. And so that's good. And let's just make sure it's taking away the first one correctly. It is. All right. So that's our buttons are working correctly. All right, so back to our nested table example. We'll create a few things just to make it interesting. We want to get these add and delete buttons down into this nested table here. And so in order to do that, we've already made cell one a position subform. And now we just want to take, highlight those two, and we go up to the edit menu and copy, and then come down to this cell, right click and paste, and it pastes those in there. And it also pastes the code as well. Now let me explain something about this code to make to help, hopefully it'll make some of the words in it make more sense. You see that I typed this dot parent dot parent instance manager instance. I could have easily typed in the absolute reference as I call it. I could have said form one dot table one dot row one dot instance manager dot add instance and the result would have been exactly the same in fact let's comment this out and just show that that's true actually I'm in the wrong button I need to cut that let's paste that into this here let's paste that into this cell and comment that out and I'll show you that this these two things are equal these two Java statements are equal They're not equal and I got an error. What did I get an error for? Oh, I forgot. I forgot to go main. So you got to trace the hierarchy. Form 1, main, table 1, row 1. We got to go in order. All right, so that equals this.parent.parent.instanceManager. All right, just for an example. Now this should still work. All right, here we go. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. All right, so why wouldn't I type it this way? Why wouldn't I use the absolute reference? Why would I use this relative reference? 
Well, because I thought maybe in the future I might want to reuse that code in a different place, but the same relative place. In other words, I knew that this button was going to get copied down to this cell, and the first, the first set of code works in this cell, but it would not work in this cell because we're, di we're at a different point in the hierarchy. In the hierarchy here, we're in form 1, main, table 1, row 1, cell 2, table 2, row 1, and so on. And so this would have to be a lot different than this in order for it to work in the nested table. But relatively speaking, this button is in the same relative position to the row we're trying to get to repeat as this one is to its row we're going to try to get to repeat. So if I type the code in a relative way, then when I copy and paste that over, I don't have to change the code at all. It works just the same. And so let's prove that. But in order to do that, we have to make sure we adjust the settings of table 2. Now we got to go to row 1, binding, and make it repeat as well. And we'll set that to 3. All right, here we go. Let's make sure it works. So now this repeats, but also this repeats. All right, we got to our maximum. I always said repeat three times, and that's why I get that error. All right, now we still have some problems. Obviously, you can see that the cell is not growing correctly, and I'll go back and fix that in just a second here. In table two, we, we allow row one to grow, but cell two apparently is not growing. And that's because the reason it wasn't growing correctly is because apparently in the order which I did things, there was a mistake in the XML code. But by coming here and fixing, by just doing that and then turning it back to top to bottom, apparently that fixed it. Now we go back to our preview. Yeah, and the, the cell itself is growing. We're still contained inside of that border. Okay, but now I see another problem. As we're growing the table, it's almost like we're creating a watermark, or we have a watermark created with our TrueTech troubleshooting URL here. It's not pushing that down the page. It's not allowing that to grow down the page. So just for an example, why is that going on? Well, we have cell 2 set to float. We have table 1 inside of main. Main is not set to float. It's set to positioned. And so what happens when we set it to positioned? It fixes the label we have at the top, True Tech Troubleshooting Tutorials, and the label we have near near the bottom here at their respective XY coordinates. So it's gonna since it's in a position subform, that object is not gonna move. It's gonna stay at 0.25 inches on the X coordinate and four and a half inches on the Y coordinate. That is the coordinates for this square right here. It's gonna stay there. Now, however, if we take main, we go to our object tab, and we choose float, watch immediately what happens to the form when I do this. All right, it scoots everything together. And the reason it does it that way is because I don't have table 1 in between these in the hierarchy. So if I grab table 1, and I move it in between those, then it's in the order I want, but it's all scrunched together. And so that's one of the disadvantages of float is you can't get it to stay where you want it sometimes. But the advantage is when I push the plus button, no matter where I push it, it pushes everything down the page. And so now TrueTechTroubleshooting.com moves down the page accordingly and moves back up as I subtract things. So the nested table is working. All right, so one more thing, and then we'll be done with this tutorial. Well, I wanted to also show how to make sure the object paginates correctly if you get, say, to the bottom of the page. You want it to break across to the next page. And so in order to do that, we need to come in here to table 1 and row 1 and set our max, or turn off our max so that it, it doesn't stop at 3. And the same thing for our row 1 here. Take that off. And so now let's preview and let's just add a bunch of these things all the way down the page and do we get it to break? we do, we get it to break to page 2 but only the bottom URL label is breaking 
this other is just hiding behind looks like it's going down page one but not going to page two why not and that's a really important point in table one we have to make sure if you see these exclamation points these little warnings it's telling us basically what we saw happen there in the last preview this object may not work properly although the object is allowed to break deselecting the allow page breaks within content option of the parent object restricts the object from breaking between pages and that's what we saw happening so what we have to do is we have to allow page breaks we have to check that box but we also have to go to the main page and have it checked as well and it was and that's why you got the warning because it was allowed here but not here and we also probably need to go down here to table two and do the same thing and it is already checked we have to have everything in the nested order selected to allow page breaks and then the warning goes away now you still have a warning but it's just because I misspelled something so the warning goes away as soon as I have all the allow page breaks and contents checked if I let one of them unchecked you'll get the warning again so now that they're all checked watch what happens we can grow the page by adding some rows and all of a sudden the page is now broke and do we get rows down here yes we do and they continue down the page and we also get a repeat of our initial header which is another setting that we won't go into now so hope this tutorial helps you with nested tables these can be used in a lot of different applications to do invoicing to do multi-level questioning on a Q&A form a lot of different applications so keep the questions coming and keep remembering that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy.